Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and continue the progression guide for the Righteous Fire character. And today is a really exciting day because we actually have found not only some pretty sick gear upgrades, but also been doing a little bit of theory crafting. And, you know, it never ceases to amaze me how you can play the same build 11 times and every single time you play it, there's always something you can add on if you choose to, like, you know, play, play it like a later expansion. So, <clears throat> first off, to start with some upgrades, um, we ended up finding a Rise of the Phoenix from Kadiro. I basically was spam running um, tier 1 to tier 2 maps, whatever I had stocked up of, uh, and that I got really lucky and ended up, basically I was just spam running Parandas and I got a Rise of the Phoenix, so I was like, wow, that's fucking amazing. Um, so, one other thing we did is we crafted some more boots. Not really too impressed with these boots. I mean, I know they give like a crazy amount of resistances, but I don't really need the resist right now, and there's... I basically just don't really need the resist right now. Um, so I kind of lost a little bit of chaos res, but I gained a little bit. So we're at 13%. Actually almost had a near rip. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the clip for it right now. This video is a little bit rushed, but had one near rip, which was to Toxic Sewers. We had a double ghosted, double damage boss with sub fizz. Um, and the spider like almost three shot my character. So that was kind of spooky. Got a pretty sick belt here. Uh, we do need to work towards getting an elder crafted belt. Uh, an Elder Crafted Belt will give us a recovery roll. Recovery uh, basically multiplies all of your life regen, which means that life regen becomes like 1.2 to 1.3 times more effective, which is really nice, or 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Um, still kind of shake gloves, need to swap these over to armor. Our gems are close to hitting level 20, so hopefully tomorrow we got level 20 gems. I ended up getting this really beast ring. The reason why I call it beast is, number one, it's got uh, energy shield as prefix, which energy shield just means a little bit of extra damage. It's got an Ellie res roll, like 13 all res, so that's really good. 26 fire res. Didn't have life, so I crafted life, but the reason why it's good is it's got plus two gems with decent stats. The plus two gems, if you guys are not aware, when you have a level 20 purity of fire, you actually get another plus one. So if I take this out, you can see I'm only plus three. So at level 20, we get plus one, which means that we can now get, or we can now start leveling a bunch of different purities of fire and volleying them for 21, because 21 plus two is 23, and 23 is another break point for maximum resistance. So that is a super, super nice fight. Um, we may not end up using this ring for a super long time, but as of right now, it's pretty much our core character. Whenever you play a build like this, or in general, whenever you're trying to min-max your gear, um, it, it's always kind of difficult because there's like so many different things that you can do. Does that like sort of make sense? Like, um, for example, you could, I, I could like vol my Rise of the Phoenix and get uh, plus one gems. And if I got plus one, then I could use like Purity of Ice, Purity of Lightning with an Empower, and the Empower get plus one and then it can boost them, and then you have two 23s, right? So there's always like a lot of interesting stuff you can do, but this was definitely a nice find because this basically means that we're going to be volleying a lot of our 20 Purities of Fire. The other cool thing is if I volley and it breaks and it goes to 19, 19 plus two is still 21. So even if it breaks, literally no matter what happens to it, Nothing can hurt me. It can only I can only lose like one fire res from it. So this was sick. Um, kind of done with this Ambu's charge. It's pretty garbage at this point. The two percent life regen, if you've been hit recently, is nice. But um, I don't know. I guess now because we have Rise of the Phoenix, life regen is not as important anymore. So like if you look here, I degen a little bit, but I mean when I'm walking, it's like nothing essentially. So. This is like, basically Ambu's is going to have to get gutted soon. So we need to find an Elder Helmet to also craft that. Now, one other thing I want to go into uh, really fast. Let me uh, pull up a quick little command here. Actually, I don't even need the command because I've got it stickied here. So I, uh, I made a command in my Twitch stream, which basically is going to cover uh, some of the goals of the character. So I want to talk about that now. So find an Elder Armor Base Helmet for crafting. The reason why I say Elder Armor is because Elder... Uh, enables us to find uh, preset conch effect on helmet and burn damage on helmet. And if you pair that with an essence, you could get 30% more elemental damage with conch with, you know, there's just a lot of variables there. But either way, no matter what, it's a straight upgrade. Could also delve craft uh, with Scorch and Pristine, which would give us the minus fire res. That's probably going to do what we're going to do first before we get the Elder Base helmet. But if you get super lucky, then you can get both of them. So that's kind of why I'm just waiting, actually. Um, so that's kind of like these three right here. We ended up finding the Rise of the Phoenix today, which was super sick. Um, I don't really need the Oak Prophecy anymore since we have a Rise of the Phoenix. It would still be nice to find a, a Saffle's Frame, though, just for future gearing. 
Um, level 20 purities is something I want to get set up, but we're not doing it right now. But if you've noticed, I'm actually not running a sulfur flask anymore. I'm running a topaz, sapphire, and ruby. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I want to find an empower and an enlighten. Uh, level 20 gems, which should be tomorrow. Balefire weapon. I actually don't think I'm going to do this anymore because of a cool interaction I'm going to tell you guys in a second. Uh, find a comb's heart. I don't actually think I want to use a comb's heart, but... Again, another thing we'll talk about later. Belly of the Beast would be a sick upgrade, and an Elder Astral chest piece would be awesome because of what it's able to roll as well. Uh, crafting some jewels. Jewel crafting is really important with Righteous Fire because since you get so many life nodes, um, you can basically trade. So think of it like this. A jewel can roll 7% maximum life. So say you have 7% life and like fire damage, or 7% life and burn damage, or 7% life and area damage, uh, plus you know the potential other stats. In my opinion, it's totally worth losing two life nodes to get a strength node, which is a tiny bit of life, and a jewel, which would give you damage and life. So that's kind of like where we're at now at level 88. Um, it's kind of like the min-maxing part where craft your jewel, remove life nodes, and then reallocate them back again. Um, stopping the degen with RF it should probably happen tomorrow. Finding a Witchfire Brew is really cool because Witchfire will make us drop flammability and we'll be able to essentially run... Um, a, uh, a better version of kind of like I think it's like a better version of flammability just because of the huge increased damage on it I could be wrong though, but either way we'd get stib Knight, which then allows targets to miss uh, Crafting a marble amulet is another big one We're gonna have to look at our maps to see what's there and then vol righteous fire a lot of people told me to just vol My you know like vol a bunch of righteous fires The only problem with voling them is you want to save your vol orbs and solo cell found for red tier map progression Because you need to complete corrupted maps, so I would prefer to save them towards that now, to go over this unique interaction I was talking about, if you have been watching the series, and I'm going to link the playlist below as well, you'll know that I was talking about setting up a storm brand uh, setup for Culling Strike and Onslaught. It actually works really well. So we use storm brand, faster casting, Onslaught support, and Culling Strike. So our storm brand shoots out, hits targets periodically, right? Has a chance to, well, not has a chance to, will pretty much almost always call because Righteous Fire is a degen. So once they get to that 10%, if Storm if uh, Stormbrand ticks, it will call it and then gives a chance to roll the onslaught. Now, I decided to drop Shield Charge for now, and this is totally because of my play style. I've noticed that Shield Charge is actually really slow with where our current character is in terms of gear. Now, if I had like another 40% total attack speed, it would feel a lot better. So I dropped it for Consecrated Path, and this added a really unique type of way to play the character. So the first thing to note is Consecrated Path creates Consecrated Ground when you blink to an enemy. So I click you know, right, right over here, I blink into the pack, I get fortify, create consecrated ground on the floor. Sulfur flask, usually, you know, you play flask meta, so you hit all your flasks, you go, but your sulfur flask would be like down here. So it wouldn't really make sense. Like the sulfur, the consecrated ground is still good, but it's a bit more difficult to play opposed to consecrated path, you just click it and there's consecrated ground all the time. So I thought to myself, hmm, how can I make this build feel a little bit better? Cause it's kind of clunky with the amount of buttons I have at the moment. So I thought to myself, if I find the Betrayal, which actually is cool because I normally really dislike Betrayal, but being able to actually want to do Betrayal is, is a nice feeling. So there's a um, a craft you can get from Betrayal that says, casts socketed spells on attack with like a one second, inter like one second internal cooldown. So, get this. If I get that weapon or that craft, this weapon's not even like that good. It's pretty, it's pretty okay, but it would be pretty easy to replicate a better version of this weapon, right? Fair enough. So if I have inside this weapon, Stormbrand, Calling Strike, Onslaught Support, right? Anytime I use Consecrated Path, let me explain to you how much my right click would generate. My right click would be a, a gap closer to get into the monsters. It would create consecrated ground, which gives us like what, four to 6% life regen per second. Because we use brutality, we do not mess up our elemental equilibrium, but since it would cast storm brand when we use consecrated uh, path, storm brand would shoot out, which would apply elemental equilibrium. And because of how fast storm brand ticks, it's very reliable for elemental overload. And it also will be able to cull which will proc us Onslaught. Meaning with one button of right click, we will be applying Elemental Equilibrium, Elemental Overload, we'll have Calling Strike automatically on top of Calling Strike, 
We'll have an eight second onslaught from the onslaught support. We'll have fortify. <clears throat> we have the mobility. So not only does it enable that, it also enables another four link option potentially because we'll be moving around our, uh, our gear and we don't need to use faster casting anymore because we're not casting it anymore. It's being casted by a trigger gem, which is perfect because then we save, a, we save basically a, uh, a link. And that's important because we now have the ability to run a Vol Gem. Because right now, if you look here, even if I had Vol Righteous Fire, I would have to drop something. But everything's pretty important. You know, I, I always want to be using Enduring Cry. Even though it's pretty much always up, I don't ever want the Enduring Charges to fall. Scorching Ray is single target. Blood Rage is basically just a damage buff overall. Uh, Flame Dash is really important. So we don't really have room for anything. But by removing Stormbrand, because it'll be casted on Trigger, we now have the option of using Vol Righteous Fire again. So this is something that's really unique to Path of Exile that I get really excited about uh, because overall it just makes it it makes the game so much more fun when you have when you have that potential to keep on playing to further and better your character you know and that's why I always call people silly when they say like you know why do you only play one build or whatever because it doesn't end you know the the customization the theory crafting potential it just does not end you just keep on going going until you can do no more but then in three months when they release new meta crafting and new uniques and new items and all this stuff it really does change not only the progression of the character but how the character performs overall so with that being said uh let me go ahead and run a map for you guys so let's go pop something in over here uh we are also four of six on our lab completion which is nice and another thing about the shield charge versus uh, consecrated path that i don't know if i talked about is flame dash is infinitely superior to shield charge in this build because of how much more quick flame dash is so it would make sense to use flame dash to get out of a scenario rather than shield charge also with things like vine snare shield charge is really slow flame dash is still like instant for the most part so i'm gonna go pop in like uh, i don't want to do too high of maps right now because it's gonna like mess with the atlas at the moment so i can really only do like here i'll do like a shore for you guys okay seems about good So, now we run Blood Rage, which is nice. So, we're going to pop... Let's see, what do we have here? We've got Tormented Spirits, Turbo, Extra Damages, Lightning. We've got Beyond and Kadiro. So, we're going to do Blood Rage, Righteous Fire on, Flasks up. Oh, let me... See, this is the annoying part now, is I still have to cast Stormbrand. But I'm telling you, once we don't have to cast Stormbrand anymore, ooh, it's going to feel so nice. This is a pretty juicy shore, like what the hell? Two Beyond bosses like five minutes and <laughs> like ten seconds into the map. <laughs> Keep hitting tab out of force of habit. Trying to trying to stop hitting tab as much. Lightning Mirage, no thanks. Can we get a petition to remove Lightning Mirage from the game? Anyone, would anyone be down? All right, Ghost, fine. You get away this time, buddy. Come here.
things otherworldly. Yeah, they are. Beginning to think I may potentially drop my Sapphire Flask for a... I may drop my Sapphire Flask for an Amethyst. Because... I don't know, I feel like I'm not really too scared of cold damage. Lightning damage is fucking stupid, so I'm, I'm keeping the Topaz. I'm keeping the Topaz, but I don't know about... I'm not really too sure... Besides Delve. Delve is... It's really important to have cold res because of the on-death uh, on death spiders. But I'm not really sure what, in terms of just regular mapping, I would need cold res for. I know there's Host. Host is pretty spooky because he can shotgun um, with, his, with his Ice Spear, if you like... Oh, speaking of boss, how you doing, buddy? That's okay. <laughs> there he goes. Definitely shouldn't have stood there in case of DD. Probably the last pack. No, uh, it's probably like maybe there, or some some pooper shooters maybe. Nope, not sure where they are. Yep. Anyway, that's pretty much the map clear. Um, another thing to note is what's going to be nice is when our gems hit level twenty, <coughs> righteous fire gets another radius boost. Radius scales really well with area. So the reason why I haven't picked up area yet, like amplify. Is mainly just because I'm waiting for the max radius on Righteous Fire because it makes it quite a bit better um, for the Amplify itself. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I uh, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Hope you guys are liking this mini series. Um, I'm really enjoying it personally. I'm having a lot of fun progressing with this character. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below or feel free to hop on the stream at twitch.tv slash box. Take care, have a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow.